Early on May 16th, as it approaches its 51st perijove, NASA's Juno spacecraft will continue its exploration of Jupiter's volcanic moon Io with a flyby at a distance of just 35,600 kilometers. This flyby is a part of a series of encounters Juno will perform before a pair of close flybys in late December of this year and early February of next year. But before we get into what we can expect from next week's encounter, let's take a look at what Juno saw during its encounter back in March when it flew by Io at a distance of around 50,000 kilometers. From the images Juno Cam returned, we are hoping to answer three questions. How has Io's surface changed in the 16 years since it was observed by New Horizons? What volcanic plumes are active on Io today? And how does the geology of Io's north polar region differ from the rest of Io? The resolution of the images from Perijo 49 was just high enough at 34 kilometers per pixel to reveal tantalizing hints of surface activity. For example, the area around Corus Patera is redder than it appeared during the Galileo mission 22 years ago. Reddish sulfur on Io is often indicative of high temperature silicate volcanism. There is a new deposit of dark material at a volcano east of Giru Patera that may be a new lava flow. This same volcano experienced a major eruption during the New Horizons flyby in 2007, and GRAM has regularly seen thermal emission there. Finally, the red ring of Pele appears less distinct than it did in 2007, suggesting its plume is less active. The last inventory of plumes again dates back to that New Horizons flyby in 2007, and checking on what's active today can help us to understand the longevity of Io's volcanic plumes and how they relate to thermal emission. And the images reveal no plumes. Uh, a few known plume sites were near the limb and terminator, including Bolin, Zamama, Marduk, and Pele. It isn't known if the lack of a visible plume at Pele or Marduk is due to poor wavelength coverage or image resolution, but the Voland or Zamama plumes should have been visible if they were active as fuzzy blue splotches just beyond the Terminator on Io's night side. This leaves the Tonatia plume as the only one Junocamp has seen so far. Images from Perijo 49 revealed a variety of albedo markings across Io's north polar region with reddish-brown sulfur-rich plains and deposits of white sulfur dioxide frost surrounding mountains or active volcanic centers. In my last video, I mentioned a dark spot near the North Pole, which may be the shadow of a mountain or a volcanic depression. Images from Perijo 49 and GRAM thermal data from Perijo 43, released around the same time, still don't allow us to distinguish between these two possibilities. So what can we expect from Perijo 51 uh, next week? Well, unlike the last few distant encounters with Io, where Genocam and GRAM observed Io for a short period as it passed through their respective fields of view, the position of Io and the orientation of Juno actually allow for continuous monitoring of Io throughout the encounter. In fact, Io stays within the Genocam field of view for well over a day both before and after closest approach. JunoCam's imaging of Io will honestly only be limited by effective resolution, data volume, which is an increasing concern due to the loss of uh, the lossy compression mode uh, on JunoCam, and a brief period where Jupiter is in the way near Perijove. Uh, such lengthy observation time will allow for the detection and monitoring of plumes at Prometheus, Marduk, Surt, Voland, and Zamama. With a longer observation period, more of Io will be observed this time around, which will allow for a broader search for surface changes. On the thermal imaging side of things, GRAM will be able to get its longest observation of Io to date, with seven and a half hours of observing time compared to only six minutes during Perijo 49. This will allow for infrared imaging of Io's leading and trailing hemispheres at less than 75 kilometers per pixel with imaging of its northern hemisphere in the geometry you see here down to just eight kilometers per pixel. 
GeoRAM data will provide a more complete picture of the state of Io's current volcanic activity, which can help prepare for imaging plans during the close encounters later this year. It will also allow us to monitor how thermal emission at Io's volcanoes varies over the course of those seven hours and provide details of how thermal emission is distributed across each volcano. Finally, with more time comes more images, which can be summed together to reduce the impact of noise from the Io plasma torus. The next Juno encounter with Io is on July 31st, during Perigeo 53, when the spacecraft will come within 23,000 kilometers of Io's surface. Genochem images from the Perigeo 51 encounter should be available late next week, presuming there aren't any DSN slowdowns. GeoRAM data will be made available on the PDS in late February 2024. Thanks for watching.